Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to TCG University. It's me, Noah, your lovely host here with... James. And special guest... Chris McKinney. Uh, our boy Chris here was... You were one of the judges at the re-raise event, right? Yes, I was the head judge for the event. Uh, we also oh, had sick. Jason Toro, who made a guest appearance. Um, sorry, Jason, that you didn't get to go to your Pokemon regional, but <laughs> you had a lot more fun with us down in Florida. So yeah. he helped keep the event running that weekend, and it was, it was a really good turnout. Solid. Uh, housekeeping out of the way. Uh, please show support by checking us out on Facebook, subbing to us on YouTube, and rolling our Patreon. And we also would like to thank all the supporters that we have. James, you want to read that list for me? Yeah, sure. Since I gave it to you, <laughs> you immediately left it alone. Uh, Ryan Core, Christopher Bromley, Sean O'Brien, Timothy Freelieb, Kevin Broberg, Josh Hillers, and Jay Rogers. We appreciate it, guys. Yeah, thank you for the support. Okay. Um, I'm just going to open up with a super basic question. Overall, how was the event for you? So... That was my first time actually being a head judge. So it, it was nerve wracking to a degree. Um, it, really, the event went pretty smooth. Um, you know, the weekend was a success. There was one small hiccup, and that was more just a, a timing. Like round one, we had a, a 50 minute round. Just it was a, a minor hiccup. The store does like five, six different games, and a lot of them are like best two out of three 50 gotcha. minute rounds. So people were like, wait. We have a whole hour. There were definitely people that stalled out to time. <laughs> and then after that, we were like, no, it's a hard 30 minutes for the rest of the weekend. Fair enough. Um, there was a lot of familiar faces. You know, people that you've probably seen in, like, Cure at Crystal Cup. So, like, Matt Okamoto was there. Uh, we had the boys from RVA Returners. Chris Adams and John Schreiner were down there. Uh, Chocobo Joe. There were some people from Good Game Chicago that showed up. Um, and there was a lot of new people as well. Um, like I want to say uh, a third, if not two thirds, of the attendees were people who had just started playing the game. That's pretty good. Like not even, not even for like two three months. And they showed up. I'm okay with that. And showing up at the event, that's fucking oh, support. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. Growth. Um. Okay. So you, we wrote it down here. The the four decks that that appeared the most. Yeah. So I took a tally of all the deck lists and. There were 16 soiree-based decks. There were nine uh, avalanche or avalanche-based decks. Some of them, there was like an avalanche soiree hybrid. Got it was you. hard for me to, to keep tally as far as what was what, but pretty much if it was an avalanche core, uh, there was about nine of those. Uh, six mono waters, two of them made it into top cuts, and then there were five samurais. And everything under five, um, I mean, there was like Ridia Palimporum, uh, there was... Some really off the wall ones like mannequins, scions were there as well. Um, I think there was like mono fire, a couple king's glaives. And yeah, were shout out the king's glaives. I love king's glaives so much. The thing that really surprised me is that I only counted two sky pirate decks that entire weekend. Yeah, that seems nuts. Like I thought it was going <laughs> to be a lot more. From presence. sitting at the top from the last set or last format, I guess, into this one. Like I don't think it got any weaker either. It just nobody played it. Um. Yeah, because I don't think besides no, because I don't I don't think Soirees off the top of my head has anything immediately in its kit that stops Sky Pirates kit. The only thing is you can't straight break anything, and they can't ping off if they're playing like a Palimporum build. But like yeah, yep, because the Madam Edel becomes a really solid lightning rod. Yeah, yep. like you have to take care of her first, um, and if she's already on the field, you don't want to let her leave because then the deck has to play fair. Um, I'm really interested to see if we get more uh, tech with like character breaks because if you take Shinju out that backup, mm -hmm. uh, the color fixes. Yeah, that the deck, deck slows down significantly. You're not allowed to pay whatever you want for all of your dudes. Right. I wonder how you do that. Does Hecaton chairs three or more? Isn't it? Hecaton chairs three or more. So you could use Archer Ninja or backup. Archer. Yeah. Yep. Those two can target it. Um, so we got decks overall. What? specifically caught your eye? Like, what, what decks did you think just stood out or, like, you didn't expect to see? Um, I don't you... think anybody expected to see the, the <laughs> fire ice. I know you, I mean, that's a lot fair. of people have heard about that. <laughs> um, but really what, what surprised me the most was um, that Verstale was still there. You oh, know, yeah, there yes, was one there. Uh, yeah. Cody Snodgrass got into top cuts with Verstale, and the deck still fired off pretty well, even without Stern being in the deck. Mm -hmm. um, there are still some moments where it can be very difficult. I was watching Cody play in top cuts, and 
he played it versus Dale and only got like one forward off of it. And oh, at that yikes. point, I was like, I can't watch. It's not going. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to watch this man shoot himself in the foot. Um, top cuts then, because this is like the super interesting part. We had, was it eight soirees in top cuts? Super interesting. I think top cuts was super interesting. Yeah. So there was one, two, because there were eight three, soirees. Four, That's not five, interesting. <laughs> six. It's disappointing. <laughs> There were seven decks that incorporated soirees. Seven and tops. Jesus. Yep. That's a like, little under half. It's real annoying because there's no originality in it. It's there. You two, play soirees. <laughs> yeah, but have you seen the list? My list is nothing like theirs. There are two small raids. Right exactly now. the same. Well, look, it's small raids. There are like nine guards. Yeah. <laughs> the entire core of everything's the same. <laughs> so, but like the. I, I don't play Irwin or Elvis right now because I just don't feel the need to have them. Erwin, the 3K doesn't matter to me as much as it could. You mean Elvis? Yeah, sure, Elvis. Okay. I think it's good on EX, or if you play it at the proper moments. It's neat. It seems like Elvis is a lifesaver for but a lot of people. It's a card that I'd rather just have be something else, which is what it is right now. I mean, that's fair. And with Erwin, it's just another soiree. That's it for me. Like, the discard's cool, but I'm not abusing it, so I don't need it. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. It'd be easier to focus on the other stuff. Um, the Irwin definitely shines if you can play it after your board's more established because yeah. getting to see your opponent's hand is getting, pivotal. I've seen a dude, I've seen Irwin get looped like two or three gaining times. Gaining advantage off of it, yeah. It's, it, to me, it feels more like a win more instead of just a game plan type of card. Okay, I get you now. I still think it's cool. I don't, I'm, I'm not saying... I guess maybe it's just because when I, I was watching Top Cuts, I noticed that... Every time Erwin was played, it made some form of impact. Yeah. It's, for me, it just ends up being a discard for Gilgamesh. So. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> like, Gilgamesh is, in my opinion, better than Erwin. Which is why Kadaj is just coming back, baby. up for the soirees. But, like, there's only two main builds for uh, soirees right now. And I think they're just both real lame. What are the two main builds that you see? It is playing Ishtola, Cecil, and sometimes you see Behemoth K in it and just maintaining board state. And then the other one is just, uh, as I like to call it, it is literally just dragon format from Yu-Gi-Oh! Because everything is colorless. Okay, fair enough. Shinju, uh, the, uh, well, what are they? The, the, the weird <laughs> dragon morphs. The Kirin, the entire Kirin archetype. It's oh, all of those. Uh, yeah. Shijin. Shijin, Kirin. not Shinju. Yeah. Yeah, the Shijins and those are all just colorless, so everything in your hand pays for everything in your hand. Okay. Nothing in your hand is off color. Do we see any Shijins being played around? Um, I didn't see any Shijins that were actually at the tournament, but during the side events, people were playing. Because like, I, I played some like off-the-wall like yeah. gunslinger matches with people, and I saw a couple Shijins. Okay. Yeah. Those are like the only two decks I see is using Ishtola and Behemoth K to just kind of wall out your opponent into losing slowly. And I think it's lame. We're gonna go through these though. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I'm just saying, if seven of the same are the same deck, and you constantly think that deck is not hard to play against, something's up. I don't. That's just because I played against yours. I've I've played right. enough matches against Soiree where I'm like, I can you know, I know what to look know out for. Yeah. yeah. One of these days, I'll build a, a deck that specifically hits back row. Okay. Um, I guess from bottom up. Yeah. On top 16. So we had, what was 16? So 16th place was the Firewater Twins. Um, this build was by Kyle Hewlett. And as you can see in the list here, it did not run Rydia. So it was really just a, a Firewater-based deck um, focused more on, like, Moshery to pop off your summons and then take them out of your break zone to draw or bounce things back up to hand. Gotcha. Um, the only thing that I thought was really weird just looking at the deck, and I understand that like Kyle was a newer player uh, coming into this event, is I get very scared about seeing decks that have Mashery with the Princess Sarah. Oh, yeah. Because as, you know, what we've practiced here locally, um, you know, sometimes that Princess Sarah is your only other color fixer. And if your opponent knows what they're doing or if they want to throw the Ratsu at it, you can be absolutely locked out of <laughs> Jerry's over there shaking his head like, yep, I've had it happen. I've watched it happen. <laughs> it feels bad. Um, and I don't know. The more I've looked at the deck as well, um, I see where the Palimporum control comes into play. 
but I'm not really seeing a whole lot of options as far as how to fire off the Braska Grand Summon. Um, I think Princess Sarah is really your only ability to wind. generate wind. Gotcha. Um, which seems kind of risky. You know, in a yeah. build like this, because it plays fire, I would have loved to see, like, even just that fawn. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe doing, like, a, a fire-wind hybrid with it. Um, which Onion Knight? It's the new Onion Knight, the one that you discard and then draw to. Oh, the, the okay, yeah, yeah. Yep. But otherwise, like, he played his games really well. Um, obviously, I couldn't watch every single match that was played, but, you know, Palimporum is still definitely oh yeah we uh, get pound pour out early i like the the addition of jen <laughs> i think jen's a really neat fire card uh right. for any deck that uses a fire forward to deal damage yep. um so 15 then 15th place was a pretty static um avalanche list uh it was interesting to see kadaj and noctis in the deck together so it's the light oh. noctis and then um, dark kadaj yeah I see where like some power plays would be like using the the multi element Barrett to discard a card to pick up a different category seven. So if your hand gets clogged or if you have one on the field already, you could get it out of your hand. I play like four or five different light guards. Yeah, so, you yeah. do. You you I, discard Aerith a lot. Yeah. But you also play the Opus fourteen cloud as well. So if you have yeah. like light Aerith in your hand, yep. you can get rid of her. It also gets rid of her. Yep. Yep. I like that. So. Light Noctis for the party attacks. Kadaj, I'm assuming, is just removal. Yeah. Just for his, his uh, remove too. Removal, get things out of the, the So Kadaj is still very good, strictly on the fact of uh hitting discard piles nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Cause everybody's bringing back summons. Fusoya. Uh, they are nuts. <laughs> all the other targets are bringing back summons. You have uh Madame uh, Adele gets hit by this because she won't have targets. Suarez wants to bring back its, yep. its summons and all of its options. You have all the regular stuff. Uh, one other thing, my I guess. Uh, Come on, you got this. I believe in you. Avalanche. Oh yeah, Avalanche yeah. Avalanche also doesn't. Is that that was the hard thing. Uh, my brain just stopped for a second. That's fair. <laughs> uh, Thirteen. Um, we're actually on fourteen. Oh, we're fourteen. My bad. Yep. So this one was played by Kyle Peters. It was an avalanche deck that played the soiree backups. Um, so they were literally just like Amber to search out your uh, Shinju. Uh, so just fast play backups? Yep. It That's just figures out your backups. Okay. It gets you color fixed really easily because you can have Amber grab your Elvis, which sets yeah. you online for your uh, Earthfire plays. Yep. yep. Um, and also if you have Shinju, Amber, and Elvis, that's a 9K hit off a of backup. That is. So it's... It's pretty good. I think that's one of the things, at least when me and James talk about it, that Avalanche needs is a, a way to consistently deal with targets on board instead of just relying on Cloud or Big Boys. The only right. reason I don't like it is strictly on the fact of you only get it once for Elbows. Yeah. You have to find a way Unless to remove you it. Unless you EX Like Sasano Woe. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Obviously, but uh, Sasano Woe is like your only way of getting rid of backups. Now, as far as being our resident Avalanche player, um, have you contemplated trying like Soiree Avalanche after seeing some of these lists? Because I would have never thought I to match have, two of them together, but it works. I have because I'm already like working around trying to see what it's like to cut colors out of the Soiree because I don't. I feel like I don't need them in sure. certain styles. Sure. But for the build I'm playing right now, I kind of want to just focus on it because we're going to that event in uh, Pennsylvania in September, and I want to keep switching around my deck for that. Do you think oh, you fun. can fit Fusoya in your Soiree deck? I'm just curious because the you, fusoya? yeah, oh, the life fusoya. No, 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 no. The water fusoya, the new one. I have tried, but there's not many like um, summon targets I care about right now. Like I, I play Ama and I play Miss Dragon, but there's nothing I'm wanting to consistently pick up. So like I can't guarantee there's something in my discard pile I want. I'm if playing you, Shiva. Right. I'm playing Shiva right now because uh, oh. it fixes my ice and does the same thing Cactar does, and I'm not. The discard's extra, and I don't need the extra damage off Cactar. Fair enough. What's next? 13? Yep. So okay, now I'm on track. A, it's another Soiree deck. Um, this one was played by Daniel Kirka. Uh, it had Soiree with the new Cecil. Yep. So, you know, it has a really good, strong start. Looking at the list, um, it does play Kieran. Uh, there's 17 different targets that he could have hit in the deck for it, <laughs> which, you know, is... 
the the risk that you get with Kieran, right? Is yeah. It only grabs a forward of cost four, not, not four, four or less. less, not any other type of character, but like being Solid able four. to play the Kieran and then hit a good target, or you play Cecil and start building down your backups. Yep. You know that's also why Kieran, like Kieran and Suarez, is like that the Shinjin. Sh- I can mess it up. The uh, the monsters and then the. Uh, uh, Madame engine because they're all fours. They're all fours, and all of the Karens are fours as well. Right. So everything you're looking for in your deck is going to hit off, going to hit it. So not only does it color fix itself, it also plays f- for free without having to worry about missing. Uh, you could bring back that. Uh, remember that old vanille, the one that when it enters the field, you choose a doll forward, you call a number, and reveal the top card of your deck, yeah. <laughs> and if it matches the number, you get to break that doll forward. Four. Right, just call fours, fours all day. Um, that was actually kind of funny. So one of the things that I wish I could actually talk to Daniel more about it, because you know, being judging, watching top cuts, and just all the other games going on, it was actually pretty difficult to have one-on-one conversations with everybody. Yeah, I would assume so. Um, I was interested as to why he played the new Carbuncle. It was the the one cost Carbuncle that pumps your board by two, and then if all of your backups are Earth, Earth you get two. to draw a card. Yeah. I would have much rather seen um, Gollum from like Opus 9, Opus 10. It's 2 CP, EX burst. It pumps only one forward up by 2K, but you you still get that draw. Maybe. Obviously, I can only speculate on it. I would say it's, if specifically for this deck, it would be to try and keep Madame L. Adele alive. I can see that. Because if she's still on the field, none of your guys take damage, and they can't be broken by things that don't deal damage. True. So maybe it's for that reason it's just cheaper just in case like he has 2K. the one backup instead. Yeah. Yeah. That would be my guess. Oh. I wouldn't know for sure. Would love to hear it. Daniel, if you're watching, uh, leave us some comments as to why you uh, made the choices that you did. I think oh, you played sure. really well over the weekend. It's Again, Suarez seems like... I mean, it is just the new Sky Pirates. Yeah. Um, the deck builds itself essentially with its core, and then you just fill in the gaps with anything that you feel like you want to fit in. It's just more open than Sky Pirates. Yeah. Was. It's not as uh, confined. Yeah. Because there's not, you don't have multiple Suarez to pick from. You have a set instead of like Sky Pirates where you yeah. can pick for different instances. And it's, a, it's a really new player friendly build as well. That's very I yeah. mean, you could buy two boxes of. Emissaries of Light, and almost guarantee everything that you need for the deck. Yep. The highest rarity in it is a hero. So, like, new players can pick up and have a really solid, consistent deck for a really low entry point as well. Yeah. Um, it was one of the things we talked about the last time we had a podcast was... Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How I like that they're adding archetypes to the sets themselves. Because they not only does it create standard decks that they're adding already immediately to the format, as well as obviously adding and compounding to everything that exists or whatever people are going to build. But it gives an easy point for new players who don't, who aren't able to find the older sets. Because, like, 14 sold out almost everywhere. You're not going to find 14. Right. So, like, it's going to be harder to find the older sets the more and more it goes. So, like, having the ability to just build a brand-new deck off of just a couple of boxes, super good for new players. Bonus. Uh, what's the next one? Yeah, so going 12? into 12th place, we have a Samurai's build, if you want to take a look at that. Yeah, let's see. They play, play Samurai. Both are different. I'm just, just going <laughs> on a limb here. <laughs> on a limb. I haven't seen, I guess because the Samurai build I look at is, uh, or the most recent one I looked at was one Zeth built, it didn't play Hein in it. So seeing him in here is a breath of fish. It's playing the new Luneth. That's, that's sick. Yeah. I like that. It's cool. That makes sense. Um, Bahamut, Brynhildr, Ama. And that seems weird is that the Squall is a, a one, of. one of. Yeah. You'd think that with as much board clearing and the efficiency that you get off of Squall, you really only need to swing with Squall and then uh, like another Cyan samurai, yeah. with just a couple Samurai backups, and you have a pretty heavy board clear, and you could do it pretty early on in the game, too. Zade, Kukaspel. Maybe they just didn't have it. Possibly. Kadaj, is Kadaj a staple for Sam decks? Or is it just he threw that one I in I think Kadaj is a staple meta card most of the time. Mm. Yeah. We I haven't think it seen was, him for a, 
a good a full medical. Format, so. I told you when we went to the last event that we should have played Kadash. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that was my <laughs> thought. Last, would have messed people that up. was my thought. Last <laughs> format before. Oh my god, that would have. Oh. We we had talked about this where I was like, I wish I played Kadash instead of playing Shinryu, specifically just because. Getting rid of things in the discard pile was much better than getting things rid on board. Yeah, because they'll just pick them back yeah. up anyways. So it was just a much easier to have the Kadage. It was a it was a choice that should have been made last format that wasn't being made. And now it's being that made is here. Is now being made. That's yeah. fair. It's the reason why Mist Dragon. Why I keep saying Mist Dragon is really good. It's because discard piles are nuts. I mean, yes, yeah, the Mist Dragon and Kadage almost stops King King's Glade from functioning. Yes, which makes me sad. Um, let me go change my deck real quick. Shut up. <laughs> So in 11th place, we had uh, Chocobo Joe. He was playing the Avalanche Chocobos? Soiree. Oh. It, uh, <laughs> I did not see this combination coming. I never knew that uh, Avalanche and Soirees mixed together was a thing. And it's more than just the Soiree backups? It's more than just the Soiree backups. It's like it plays uh, Vespia for your draws, Madam Edel, Airwind for discard. Um, it plays the core, then the core Avalanche. Just about the whole package. Oh, shit. So Shinju is, of course, a must. Um, there yeah. was actually a point when Joe was playing um, where he dropped a Merald without having Shinju on uh, back, and you know we were able to rewind the play. Um, but just it was really eye-opening to see how pivotal that, that Shinju is when you're playing a multicolored deck like this. You have to have that color fix. Yeah. Yep. Um, and if that Shinju leaves, like you, you're bricked. It's why, depending on whichever, like, if whatever dark or light I'm going to choose whenever I play my deck, I'm always going to play, like, a Cosmos or a Chaos, specifically just for the color fix. Having that extra color fix is nuts. Especially as a free so color. So you just play Earth-based decks. Earth, I think Earth has one of the best color fixing. Shantoto? Throughout all, yeah. And Shantoto, Tyro, Tyro yeah. Shirloda. Um, Shirloda's pretty it neat. Gets, Shirloda's different. It gets one of the classes. Shirloda members. can't work as well with... Yeah, like but if you pitch a card out of hand play a dude, then it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shalota's not really built for Suarez. Kamari. It's built for, like, two color decks. I don't yeah. say Kamari is like, a perfect color fix, but it's there. What's the next one? Uh, tenth place uh, was a just a standard Suarez list. I mean, we've been talking about Suarez for the past 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. We really need to go over it. <laughs> I want to look at them all. Yeah, you're good. You're like... good. See if I missed anything. I swear <laughs> I looked at them all. At this point, it's where you start to see Suarez get a little more uh, burst-heavy. Uh, really, from here on out, most soiree I decks. Hate the summons they're all playing. playing the new era. From ninth place. Yeah, on. I, everyone. It's yep. really weird because, like, the only re- I think the only reason they play the era is strictly just protect Adele because it makes it a ten k. Yeah. I just hate playing that era because it's real small and just dies. Yeah, but she comes back. Yeah, in three turns. Yeah, that's fine. That's sometimes, sometimes that's all you need. Soirees isn't like a a fast deck by yeah. any means. It could be. So, um, you know, from here on out, as you saw with the deck list, most soiree builds are going to start to see that Aerith as well. Mm-hmm. Um, this one specifically in ninth place with Greg Cole. Um, I think the deck could have done a little better with less Shinryu. He played it as like a straight three of, um, which again, if you're going against like Mono Water or things that like Sky Pirates are going to have those threes or six costs that you might want to hit or try to get off the field. I'd be worried about getting bricked. Yeah, hard with three Shinryu's. three Shinryu seems uh, Kendall dangerous. Jackson saying he was tenth. Yes, we had Kendall Jackson in tenth right. place. I, yes. I don't know if I think it is, he's just in the chat, so I'm making sure. Yep. Hi, Kendall. <laughs> I've got you here at ten. <laughs> um, oh, that's right. He did play Alba and Zidane in here too. Yep. Which also solid cards. Boy, do I Alba, love Alba. Alba is another very like. If you can play it as a in your color staple because it yeah. removes. Yep. Yeah, it's a good call. Yep, Alba and I think Dodge to I've just start. Discard power removal right now is very pile. strong. Sorry, now I want to double check which the name was it. Was it? Uh, I, played. Was it not I can't tell you. Zidane was not in this, in this one. list. If it's the new one, the new Zidane's sick as hell. I watched that card steal like four or five cards off the top of someone's deck in top cuts. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> The one thing I do want to highlight here on Greg's deck um, is he played Fail Thanos. The, oh yeah, the, the seven CP. To, or the, the, not the new The one, Lightning Rod. Yep, the Lightning Rod. So I'd almost want to see that Shinryu come down to like a two, uh, maybe even a one. That's just my personal opinion. And, and maybe try Thanos that Cecil. Up. Cecil, Fail Thanos, and lock them down. Fucking shit. <laughs> 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 like, can you, um, uh. 
Think about that. Can you imagine? You have to pay five on a single target ability, plus two more if you're targeting with Cecil, just to be able to fire off yeah. whatever you're going to do <laughs> for removal. Like, that's so stupid. You want to tax people out. That's the way Maybe you go. Maybe it's a meme. Maybe it's a dream. Maybe I'm just full of shit. Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you start to see Aerith's here. Uh, the summons start to shift up as well. Uh, you start to see more bursts, like the five-cost Odin that gets smaller as the uh, is he game playing goes on. No EX first wall. Yeah, he okay. was playing the No EX wall. Man, what a card! Fucking new squall. Yeah. Yep, that was. God, I think Bikini McKay is just so sick. Arvin's Rebellion by Greg Cole. Then we move to eighth place. Nightclub. I like the name. Yep. So this one was a soiree party attack. So this is where you start to see that Noctis is coming into play a little more pivotal. Um, At this point, it's more of like your toolbox effects from being able to declare a party attack, either Noctis a part of it or triggering those abilities from it. Um, You start to really see the summons change as well. The new Cactuar saw a lot of play this weekend. I think that card's nuts. I saw that card a few days ago in a, a YYT video I was watching for like their, their win a box or whatever, where somebody was playing earth monks with that. And I was yeah. like, that triggers for, uh, for Yang yeah. and it breaks those fucking nuts. And there's <laughs> almost no drawback to playing it, especially no, in a not at all. Soiree where your backups are going to be multi, almost three different elements, nine times out of 10. Cause you're playing, and you're Tiro, not eating you're the damage Shantoto. unless you want to. Yeah. That's nuts. Um, I do like that. So it's great. A four CP break answer. Um, into seventh place, let you take a peek at this one, is where you start seeing your mono waters. Oh, look at this handwriting. <laughs> so nice. Molabina, um, Octo, Trust, Blue Remora, I think Remora. Is that the six CP Remora, right? Yes. Okay. All the way from Leviathan, Thomas Leviathan, Titus, Lightning, Polka. Mushroom. So it's a pretty bread and butter mono water list. Mono you know, water I think is we like. We're going for straight consistency in mm-hmm. that. And you want to look at it? No. Uh, <laughs> mono water is one of the decks I think uh, I struggled the most against. Okay. Which is why I'm surprised there weren't. There was only like two in tops. I think it has a hard matchup against Suarez. That's fair. There were 16 of them flying you around. Want, like you don't want those ETBs coming back out. No, you don't. They'll end up just messing up your game plan. And especially if they get like Cecil on board. Yeah. Pay two to bounce every time you try to do something. You have to discard two cards to yeah, attempt to do if anything. You're doing anything, you're giving with Folka at least. Anyways. You're just giving another free blood back. That's nuts. Yeah, that's it's it's a bread and butter mono water, and it made it there, which I wouldn't doubt it. Fucking mono water scares me. God. Going into sixth place, we had Cody Snodgrass with a fire ice versus stale, which holy crap. It is still a powerhouse. He only played six backups. Mm -hmm. What a monster. Even without stirring, (laughs) like the deck, the deck took a hit, but it's still obviously tops. Cody's been working on that deck with Kyle Peters. It's like their, their child. Yeah. Um, And it's, it's still a really good deck. I see the, the orphan got switched out for the new one for burst potential and Mm -hmm. board control. Um, The Philly is cool. Yeah. Philly is still there plays the uh, new squall. So just a lot of like fire ice. You want a way to keep cards. their board clear because I, I, I would assume once they get a board set up, they can kind of deal with it a lot easier. Or you hit one off their stale and then you, you cry. Yeah. That, like, was, that was so brutal to watch. They're playing the new Shantoto, which is also pretty good. Oh, yeah. Yep, to be able to... Dude, new Shantoto's nuts as well. get something back or dull out the board. Yeah. yeah. Shantoto's great. Whether, I don't think they had any crystal. I don't think he has crystal generation. So it was just to, to to get a character back, which is still fine. Yeah, still value. Man over here playing Avalanche with the new Shantoto and nope. somehow doesn't affect his deck at all. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. I'm not seeing. Why would? There's it? no crystal generation in this deck. So Why would I play like five cards? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder now. Oh. Uh, fifth place, we have another soiree build. Uh, pretty typical, although you start to see Zidane. Um, this one had the Behemoth K, and the Zidane was played by uh, Kyle McGinty. Yep. And I was talking with Kyle because uh, we played on the Cure series and also just at the uh, Florida event. 
this is such a testament to how easy it is to jump into this game because Kyle was talking about how he didn't have a whole lot of practice with like different matchups and there were some rulings oh, yeah. even he didn't really know about. Um, but like, look at how well this deck does. Yeah, just does what James made a great point. It's a great way to just jump in. What a full house. <laughs> I feel like he set that whole thing up for that. <laughs> and I'm crying on the inside, but I respect it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we're in top four so now. As we move into top four, so each deck is different in top four. Oh, is this the, the Fusoya deck? Yep. This deck was getting me hyped watching this. So we have fourth place. We have the Fusoya deck from Sam Tool. Give that wolf a banana. Uh, I... <laughs> I think I read that Fisoya twice when the card <laughs> actually came out. So just to see how that deck popped off, I amazing. I just one of the one of the games in top four. I can't remember. I think it was against the Mono Water where he slapped Zidane down and stole like four or five cards off the top. Yeah. And I was just like, how does Mono Water come back from that? Like it. I was I was rooting for the Mono Water because I was like, this deck is the deck I can't deal with. Please beat this Fusoya deck. But then I was like watching Fusoya pop off and I was like, this card's fucking nuts. Yeah. <laughs> like, just being able to recycle so much. If you're able to get the Fusoya off, it's great. It seemed just about every time he played it, he at least got three triggers off the Fusoya. Yep. I was like, insane. That card carries so much with it. Uh, Tomo is heck of a cherry cactuar. Yeah. I had, to, I had to read the backup list just to, to see all yep, the color fixing. Because like it's, it's so much color fixing, but it's color fixing that just functions super well. Uh, third place, we had Nick Schnell with the uh, Mono Water as well. Uh, still pretty typical standard core. I think the summons change just a little differently from what we've seen on FF decks. So there's like Kuchelain the Impure. Um, that's the, that's one, no. Which one is that one? Is that, that's the one the, CP? The one that blanks. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because there's like three different ones I have to. Uh, that one's really good uh, because it lets you take care of meta. <laughs> yeah, it does. Like Unless Flex is out, then it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, still plays Sildra, still plays Remora, which, what a power play between having Mashiri and Yuna on field, and you can play oh, Sildra for, for two. two? <laughs> like, I'll just selectively get two cards out of my deck for nothing. That's... God, that's gross. Mashiri had a three of. He's not playing Princess Sarah in this one, right? Nope. No Princess Sarah. Uh, no Hilda either. I know mm. some of uh, the decks, I think the one that was from the Mono Water Masters list had. Hilda I could see why. Up. She draws you one, and if you play her at the opportune moment, you can get back one of your dudes. Pull back Whether it be like Lightning, lightning. TD. Yeah. Yep. Can you imagine playing Hilda, drawing a card, and Lightning? Sick. And then we have our top two. So we oh have boy. Michael Powell uh, in second place. We have the, I think, probably the most optimized version of Suarez. Yeah, this uh, thing ran clean. Right now. And it was really interesting because when he sat down to talk uh, with Daniel before the, the, the finals started, they were kind of talking about the decks. And, you know, they get to see each other's deck list before the game begins. Yeah. And Michael was specifically practicing against, like, Ice Fire um, personally. Yeah. So just how he got locked into finals with that is crazy. He um, a the game deck had specific answers. Game one was was nuts because he completely like stomped over on game one, yep. uh, and then I guess we'll we'll talk about Daniel when we get there. Watching game two and three, I was like, what the fuck? Deck pops so quickly. It's either one person A is gonna pop off, or yeah. the other deck is. I I liked I saw him play a Kieran, and then he he did his top four, and there was a Sid Rendell there, and I was like. That's cheeky. Yeah, I like that card. What you want to hit? <laughs> Sid Randall's like one of my favorite ice cards, and I was like, oh, he's playing one? Ooh. The only part that I think was really rough is that Madame Edel and Soirees, you want to have really fast board building plays. You yeah, know, you you're do. You're gassing out your entire hand to put a whole bunch of dudes on the board and swing in in like one or two turns. The only problem is that going up against things like Squall, you have to, to watch yourself. You can't go down to zero cards in hand. You can't. Knowing that that's or he'll capitalize on that. There. Yes. And I think Even if it kills Edel, it's still... Michael did go down to zero, and he got slapped for two. Yeah. Just, it's, it's rough. Renoa said, 
Gudon was in there. Yep. Fucking Gudon. So Gudon's good anti ice. I mean, because he can't become dull. Same yep. thing with Kieran. Um, I thought the Renoa was really cool. Yeah. Being able to drop Renoa and like double up on your Edels or you know any other ETB that Marauder, you really want to pop. Yeah, you know? it's sick as shit. I like this list. Uh, I like this list when I saw Sid Randall, but I could see why this list made it to, to tops. It is very, very streamlined and like probably the most optimized we're going to see a Soiree deck at the moment until another set happen. pops up. All right. First place, which hella respect because this is just a, an optimized version of what I wanted to start working with. And it pops off so goddamn quickly. <laughs> like, I fish, I. When this was posted on uh, FF Decks, I fishbowled the fuck out of this Did you? against like all my other decks, and I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> I hope you like turn three, and I've got like five dudes on board from nothing. Uh, here, you want to look at this? I don't know sure. if you've actually seen this deck list. I think yeah. it's sick as shit. Uh, so, Dan Ramirez definitely had my heart this weekend. <laughs> like, I love knights. I love the Final Fantasy VI characters as well. Yep. <laughs> So being able to to play Celeste, either force a discard or to pick up a lock. Um, I thought it was, I mean, obviously it's it's one of the go-tos is a uh, 3CP lock. And I, I'm surprised you didn't play backup lock, but 3CP lock seemed like a really smart play, especially having Squall in your deck. I think it's, if you're playing a more aggressive route, which um, in this case, I think it was, um, I could see choosing the forward uh, versus the... Uh, backup, because yes, the backup's going to be consistent. You can find a backup, and then you can play the lock to search another backup yep. to just get your board established. Um, but if you're party attacking, which is what this deck did a lot of, you're selezing every <laughs> single turn to either freeze down their board, or you can recycle. Recycle your locks for Moro unblockable. giving you the ability for all of your dudes to party attack without the 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 element exception was nuts. Watching the more like watching him just slam Moro down, and and swing with it because it has inherent haste. I was like, this just fixes his hand regardless. Like if his hand's ever garbage, he can just put Moro down and be like, I'll fix my hand and he maybe touch you too. And, yeah, yep. it's insane. Uh, mixed with Noctis was nuts. Um, just about every time Laswell came out, it always seemed to to target like specific cards that were needed that needed to be shut down for a turn. Like watching this deck. Uh, struggle a bit in the first game and then pop off on the next two was fucking insane. Well, you start to to control those resources. Yeah. You know, if you're not really too worried about forwards, um, every time you drop a knight, you're just going to hold their back row down. Yep. That slows down soirees because um, you're not getting things for effectively twos, uh, soft twos, soft threes. Um, I think Sultheus, in my opinion, was probably one of the, the most pivotal cards as well. Yes. Because... He'd always have four forwards that he would need to remove. And the second Sultaeus comes down, if they don't, they don't have a way to stop it, there's just another dude coming out that has some extra benefit. So I think what my favorite interaction was watching this deck over the weekend is the power play of you have a crystal, right? Mm -hmm. You play Soul. When Soul enters, you pay the crystal to play a forward of cost four yep. to the field. So you Soul, Crystal, drop a Celtius, <laughs> and then you remove cards from your break zone to flip the top five and then grab something else, whether it's like a Squall or a Celez. Yeah. Just like comboing cards together. So good. Soul's, Soul's sick as shit. <laughs> that card for pay two and a crystal. So just inherently playing the game, I'm allowed to pay six CP worth of dudes for two. The free play aspect's insane. Shout outs to Daniel, dude. That deck was amazing. Yeah. And Dan was a newer player as well. Um, he said he'd been playing the game, I think, for like four weeks. Holy he, shit. <laughs> he typically plays other card games. Like he's pretty popular in like Digimon. So he had like his badge all weekend. Yeah. And he had, you remember the old TV cards from the Digimon yep. uh, series? He had one of like the TK and Patamon cards. <laughs> and it was just sitting in his uh, his badge all weekend. So, um, yeah, that was the top 16. It was a really solid weekend. Um, I'm again, I'm not surprised to see so many soirees. Uh, I assume that deck was going to show up. I'm am surprised that there weren't as many samurais and sky pirates because I think samurais, especially because they got the new four CP backup, samurai would, would still take like more precedence than it did. Fire got recursion, yeah. Like, what for any of your samurais of four less or squall? Right, it's nuts, James. That four, sa the four drop samurai is nuts. Any any uh, any takes besides the Sorry decks? 
Is there anything else that caught your attention? Uh, not really. I'm, I am today. upset that there were so many soirees. <laughs> and they were all just the same deck. Whoa. With like two changes. Yeah, but the changes mattered. Like once Aerith and Yashola were put in the deck, it seems like the, the decks function yeah, at, a, at a higher capacity. Because the Strola just stays on board because you can't hit it. Yeah, it's Minwood. Yeah. <laughs> through, its, through its own effects. It's the same reason why you don't like Barrett. <laughs> Barrett shouldn't be able to do what he's allowed to do and have a minimum effect. That's just me. Make him an 8K. Shouldn't be a 9K. I could be wrong. Whatever. Uh, okay, so here's the question then. Um, as you were watching throughout, what what deck or archetype or anything did you expect to like actually take it? Did you expect um, Fire Ice to, to take it, or did you expect like Soirees or Mono Water? No, honestly, I my expectations were to see uh, Mono Water be right up there at the top. God, I thought mono water and it could just be, you know, what we play locally versus what everybody else plays. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's also looking at the difference between the American meta versus like overseas in Japan. Um, every, every locale has different cards, different things that work. You know, we just haven't seen a whole lot of soiree here. I think the most that we've seen is a little bit of, uh, the multicolor with the Gilgamesh FFBE yeah. that uh, James was playing. That's with. like a straight go to because there's so many FFBEs to play. Right, right, and then that's it's almost like you're playing a title deck in standard. Yeah, um, oddly enough. <laughs> right. So, but no, I thought Mono Water was going to be up there. I was honestly really, really shocked to see only two Sky Pirates the entire weekend. I thought it was going to see more play because of the fan events and stuff that we've seen coming back. But you know. Soiree is very aggressive, and we are kind of at a point where, um, you know, the the meta is a little more aggressive. You're playing cards that are hella value that's either going to drop two to three forwards or they're going to build your back row for you, um, and it's like who has a bigger board or a board wipe. Yeah, do you think, um, what, what key cards do you think are going to be the ones that showcase themselves as, like, tech cards against things? Because, like, we know Kadaj will definitely be there. Kadaj is going to be there. Um, I want to say maybe Sid Randall, only because he shuts down ETs. just about every soiree forward. Yeah. Um, no, every soiree forward. Yeah, every they soiree forward. When, they when all say when. <laughs> if you have four, so do cool things. If soirees are going to be like a top contender for the next set or two, yeah, we're going to see less Shinryu because there's just not a lot of. They're not, there's no three six nines falling around. Right. There's and if there are, it, they're not as important as they, as they used to be. Um, besides Titus and Folka, and maybe Lightning, but like Lightning yeah. wants to be off the field. You'll see more Kadaj just because discard's relevant, for sure. So if you can play a deck that is really uh, versatile with your cost of characters, like if you have ones, twos, threes, fours, yeah. um, and you're playing Lightning, you can play Exodus, and that's like a hard board wipe for Soiree. Because you and your opponent yep. both pick a number and you just call fours and the board's gone. They gone. can't do anything about it because uh, it's not Exodus isn't breaking; it's placing a drop, right? Uh, it does break. Oh, then so the, you have to get around. You have to get around Edel. first. Edel will, single target pings to to get Edel off. Yeah, like yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Because you could break her really easily. Oh, you could yeah, play uh, Fusoya and Popper right, or not right. or Seymour. Sorry, Seymour, not Fusoya. Fusoya uh, works too, but so I mean, like, there's things like that. You have. Earth is probably going to be a contender because you're you're removed from game of Shantoto. Um, it's still going to see play. In that card's never going to not see play. No, it's, 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 it's never going to go away. I think watching all of uh, like how, how wide some boards get and how it's really hard to interact with single things, I think board wipes are just a lot more prevalent. Um, I'm almost going to adopt a philosophy of putting in, e even if it's like a two and two of the same card, like four mm -hmm. versions of a board wipe. That way, I'm able to uh, reset the game if need be and stop my opponent from just steamrolling my face in. I think yes. dancers would give it a hard time. That's true, yeah. With Andrea, they can't they can't target anything, and Andrea being able to dole himself and like you could put uh, three CP Aerith in mm -hmm. that restands all your backups on play and can protect your dudes with her her special those, those two or Kyrie or is it Kyrie Kyrie Kyrie? Uh, you could put Kyrie. her in, yeah, yeah. for uh, her ability to scry as well. Yep. And just play those two, dole them, and now their board's blink. Dole it. And then you the 8K the board. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, really, it's 
That's that's the plan I have with my build currently, but but I think non-targeting removal is what's going to be it's the best way to go. The oh, yeah. best way to go, or negating those ETBs. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, Ama is always going to be prevalent at this point. Yup. Um, James, you, I, I want to because I mentioned Ama, Fiona. Yeah. Do you think that there's going to be a like she she has that chance if they're playing a primarily wind deck? If they're playing primarily wind, yes. Um, but it, it's I not think happen with, in like, the only the only meta deck right now that could play that Fiona and get away with it would be Sky Pirates. That's fair. Because everything is also water. With so Philo on field, yeah. Yep. So if you wanted to, you could play entirely all wind backups and still have your water CP and need it and use it however you want without overextending so far to where you don't get to play Fiona. That's fair. Are we talking about the Fiona backup? Yeah, that's uh, just Ama. The, the forward, the 3 CP forward that says if you control four more wind backups, uh, you can pitch oh, her Fina. to cancel. Yeah, Fina, Fina sorry. Fina, yeah. My bad. Names are too close. But yeah, um, I'm really so bad. Yes, that is the only drawback with Fina is that it only stops ETBs that come from a forward. So, I mean, yeah, you yeah. could absolutely have something in wind. Maybe Sin. I think Sin's very... Sin would stop an auto. Yeah, yeah you stole a... It's, it's one of those, like... I think, I think the only reason you would play Sin is because you don't have access to your stole yeah. or your, your card draws just better, so you have that consistency with it. But that's all I'm noticing. I think watching, watching through the event, I thought it was, it was very interesting. Uh, the Soiree decks, I think the Soiree mirror match is kind of whatever. Like, I think Soiree is an interesting deck and archetype, but it's not as boring as fucking watching Dogas go at it. It's true. <laughs> it's a lot more interesting because there's more play lines than just all Mashri. All Mashri. All Mashri. Well, here's the thing. Doga matchups are fine if Mashri doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Mashri's it's the problem. Li- it's literally who has Free the most summon. Doga. <laughs> like, 2022. <laughs> um, Sildra. So, so cards that were on the watch list last time they released it was Mashri, Sildra, and Fat Chocobo, right? Yeah. Yes, Fat Chocobo. So I'm assuming Fat Chocobo isn't so much on the watch list anymore. I think just not many people play Chocobos. Yeah, because Stern's not existing. So yeah. like they don't have that that drive to to gun after. I think them. they actually. I think they wanted to. They could. They can easily get away with Fiona for counter. Well, you get to play Chocobo Sam as well. And Cecil. Yeah. So like I think they can easily get away with it. I just don't think anybody's playing. Cecil it and right. Edge. Can you imagine? Yeah. Fucking sick. Along with just being a Bart deck. Play Cedar. So you can play Noctis and still get away with all that. Yep. yep. Not you get maternity. white mage. You get maternity. white mage into your field. Yeah. Yep. It's sick. Um, Granted, this was only the first yeah. organized play event that we had, so it'll yeah, be really fair. interesting <laughs> to see what happens I, next I think month. Chocobo, happens I think Chocobo is a very good deck this format. I I'd like to see more of the fire ice decks, but I don't know for sure if that's going to be like a staple going yeah. through the rest of these events. It could um, just be like it could have just been like yeah. A, not like a fluke, the, per- the person that built the deck knows the deck better enough. It's not play just... dependent upon the person. Yeah. So there were three of them that were at the event. It wasn't like a, a single deck that rose its way up into the tops. There were three okay, Fire that's Ice. Fair. And it, technically four if you're going to call Verstale as well, which is Fire Ice. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah we're not going to call Verstale for what we're talking about. <laughs> there was one Guardians deck there. Yeah, there were some Guardians, um, whether it was like Category 10 or Guardians-based. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm I you know what I'm, I'm adding that to the list of things I thought I would see. Guardian, yeah, I thought I would have saw that. I mean, because Waka's fucking nuts <laughs> for no reason. I I like the deck. I think it. I think there's maybe one Guardian specific forward off. I have an idea of how you can fix that. How fix your Guardian's deck? Mine. Just well, fix I planned on general. getting I planned on getting rid of the the two water Tituses I was playing in mine and swapping one out for eject and then one for like something else. I think you take I think out the fire nuts. and just play sky birds. Mm. But Gives Oscar and Jack are really good and they're they're also my border removals. I get that, but that deck needs border removal that isn't just Waka. I'm just saying. <laughs> sky pirates functions with other things. I mean, it does, but. Did the, can- <laughs> the screen go up? <laughs> oh no! Uh oh. It might just be a low battery thing. I would have not foreseen that. Hold on one second. 
we still have audio, just no camera? Yeah. Oops. <laughs> well, while they're looking into the technical yeah, difficulties. So um, let's, let's wrap this up. Sure, sure. <laughs> so it definitely was a really good weekend. Uh, it was really solid, set the bar for Crystal Cup level type of events. Um, you know, hopefully this is the start of the return to organized play and we get to see uh, more events. I mean, no, they could take the winners yeah, of these and easily pick uh, invites if they wanted to do like a national. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, shout out to James Lockwood, Matt Heffelfinger of Haven Games. It was really great to see you guys and for the event that you did over the weekend. And uh, please go support the other events. The next one is in Dallas uh, next month in June. Wish we could make that one. That's the one with the Regis promo, isn't it? Yes. Fuck. Damn. And then there's need that. Uh, Legendary Wolf Games in Omaha in July. Ah, uh, we're going to be there. Well, James won't have it off, but I'll be there. Chris, you're, you're going to be there. Yeah, I'll I'm be assuming. there. I'm assuming, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jerry might be there. The it's a real Omaha event. event. Just put something up. Oliver's going to be there. Represent or represent. I can't speak. All right. Um, other than that, <laughs> I hate the, the difficulties that we're having here. Uh, it, we just have to make sure that we, we have to be plugged it in. It was so. almost full. Yeah. We just need a longer cord. Yeah. That's the issue. Uh, otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, we will have our um, locals streamed in probably within like an hour or so. Yes. Which one am I not allowed to repost streams into? <laughs> uh, don't repost it into the NA page NHL. since you've already made one post today. Okay. But, you know. Are the just, other ones fine? Oh, dude. Kindle's going to be in Omaha. You I wish I could make it in throw it in the Midwest one. I don't care. Okay. That's, that's my group. <laughs> <laughs> but yep hang tight guys we'll have uh, local streaming soon um, thanks for tuning in Stay Stay there we go <laughs>